Hey guys, DMIC here for a brand new series, the third of this channel so far. We're playing Pikmin 3, LP3, might as well uh, go with the rule of thirds here. This is the deluxe version, which was put out on Switch earlier this year, which is super cool. I'm going to check my options real quick. All of this stuff probably seems like mumbo jumbo, but we're not going to worry about that. Instead, we're going to jump right into the story. It says here that we're going to collect food and save Kopai from danger. It's a story of the big adventure with Pikmin. So let's go ahead and get started. Just going to be one. There is a co-op local, which is kind of strange, but um, I might show that off later. Just kind of what that means exactly. But for now, we're just going to do the old solo uno bachelor version of this game. Gonna play it on normal mode. I've beaten this game in its entirety on the Wii U, but I'm looking to have fun and not punish myself more than I already have. Not great at games, so normal mode seems very suitable for this type of a run through. Plus I'm commentating, which kind of splits my brain power. So we're gonna do normal mode. It says it's a sweet and frothy difficulty suited for any fan of the series, but especially beginners. Sweet and frothy is kind of a weird way to describe this, but sure. the far reaches of space lies a planet on the brink of ruin. The planet's name? Kopai. Due to a booming population, booming appetites, and a basic lack of planning, Kopai's inhabitants have all but exhausted their food supply. Their only hope is to find another planet with edible matter. Accordingly, they send unmanned scout vessels called sparrows out into space. To their dismay, the search is proving fruitless. Just as they're about to give up, the final vessel reports back with news of a miraculous discovery. They mobilized to investigate the planet, which they named PNF-404. Kopai's last hope rests on three intrepid explorers. At last, the explorer's 279,000 light-year voyage nears its end. But, as they initiate the landing sequence, something goes horribly wrong. All right, everybody. So we just witnessed tragedy. So um, yeah, let's play a video game. We're going to be introduced here to our first explorer, Charlie, as he's being surrounded by these crazy yellow creatures. Who could they be? Who knows? One of my favorite things is kind of similar to the Mario RPG games like the Superstar Saga for Game Boy Advance is they just have like gibberish that they have the characters speak and I think it's hilarious. So hopefully you guys can catch it. It's really funny. Like apparently in Kopai, is how you say his name. So I think that's hilarious. And I think that the names are supposed to be like a kind of a play on the phonetic alphabet, but, or that, uh, something, some military alphabet? I don't know. But this is Charlie, Captain Chuck, with his nice sheriff's badge. He's the head honcho in charge. Mm. 
We have to find Ove and It almost sounds like he like lost his dentures and he's trying to still be able to speak. So throughout this video and throughout the series, there's going to be these little tutorial tips that are going to pop up and kind of clue you in on what to do. I'm going to explain those as well, but you also have this as well. And there are hints, which I did turn off because I'm a pro at this game. I don't need these, but you can turn them on. They're pretty helpful if you get stuck. So the only downside is that these hints are very obtrusive and there's like giant arrows on the screen, which I feel kind of kills the immersion. I mean, it is Pikmin, so there's not a ton of that, but, you know, it is what it is. So we've got some cool rad dudes hanging out here up on this leaf. Some others over here on this ledge. Very ominous. Huh. I wonder what on earth is going on. Get it? Or I guess what, are, what on PNF 404 is going on. <laughs> so we must wind up on the on the wrong side of town here. But uh, looks like we made some minions. We must be a middle aged woman. So we've got our whistle. That's our main form of collecting buddies. And uh, yeah. This game has a lot of quality of life advancements from the Wii U version. The Wii U version was very good, mind you. But this one is exceptional. I don't know if it... Okay. I guess you just had to throw a prescribed amount. But that's it. We did it. We beat the game. I really enjoy the little mustache, the paper-thin mustache that he's got. Or pencil-thin, not paper-thin. But yes, so collecting your Pikmin, you can hold B to whistle them up. You can throw them with A. And we know how much our squad has in it. We have 15 Pikmin right now. Squad goals, am I right? So let's go ahead and scoop up all of these fellas from around here. It says that there's 30 on the field, but we don't have 30 yet. So re realistically, you only start with these 20 and the game kind of truncates some of the gameplay mechanics at the beginning. You're not going to be able to do everything. So, but you can throw your Pikmin to create yourself a nice little path. That's good. We don't need to take out all of the mushrooms. That's that's not a requirement here. But we're going to have these guys take out these ones. So we're going to loop around. We're going to collect the remainder of the squad. So you start with that 20 and you get 10 more right there. We've got some very ominous looking uh, structure here that we can't do anything with yet. That's actually something that will be a new feature of this game. So that's pretty neat. So we've got our 30 boys. We're going to head on into this cave of wonder. All these stalactites hanging around. We've got some loyal subjects here. I really enjoy the set design here. Like that's one of the things that's very endearing, charming, cute, whatever adjective you'd like to say about this game. So. So we've got these nasty little creatures here that uh, are very averse to mushroom light. I guess that's a thing. Um, these creatures can kill your Pikmin as we have something very lofty and scary floating overhead. Our Pikmin are not about it. So that's the last of Charlie. Um, we're down to 66% of explorers, unfortunately. But, um, yeah. We're gonna meet two of three today. This is one of the junior explorers, Alf, as we watch our rocket ship putter away into these kind of low res renderings of leaves. 
So we've got a bit of a problem here. We're getting all wet. So we've found the ruins of Alf. He is the B of our RGB. So, as we'll learn quickly, uh, Alf is also Captain Obvious. So we've got Captain Charlie and Captain Obvious. That's right. Get on it, Alf. So, Charlie was the first one to meet Yellow Pikmin. Alf gets a chance to meet the red ones. So we're going to keep heading this way and chase after that foreign creature. Oh, and it looks like they're in need of some help. Some kind of crazy construct here is stuck in this tree that these Pikmin seem to be enamored with. So maybe we can help. So here's a new mechanic that they introduced in this game. You can use ZR, I'm using ZL, to hit the wrong button, which is awesome. So ZR will let you lock onto stuff. It tells you exactly how many Pikmin you need to do that. And this strange device has come to life. So this is not fruit elf, unfortunately. But it's, it's tempura. So Alf gets distracted easily. He's a little bit of a uh, an airhead, but that's okay. We are not playing with the Joy-Con, so we don't have to worry about that. But yeah. We found ourselves uh, three Pikmin to help us do our bidding here. This is a new, very frequent mechanic of Pikmin 3, is carrying stuff back and forth to build bridges. This game loves that. There's a ton of it. I don't necessarily think it's bad, but it is uh, not my favorite mechanic. So in this game, when you have Pikmin that are going to help you by carrying pieces of bridges, they will automatically return to the spot where you threw them initially. So when you're building bridges, they'll go back and get the pieces, they'll pick up a new piece, and they'll bring it back. So they're very autonomous. Pikmin are very independent, strong women, potentially. I mean, they are plants, so they're a little bit of A, a little bit of B. If you are into botany and understand how horticulture works, kudos for you. So we've got all those pieces of that bridge set up. You can daisy chain. If you whistle your Pikmin before they get all the way back, you can make sure that they don't wind up am scrang too far away. So that's nice. And we built our first structure. So we did it, guys. Talk about that. That's teamwork. And it seems we've found a lost piece of technology. Someone left their Wii U. Surprising since the Wii U was so popular and wasn't a failed console at all. But this is Alf's Copad. Makes me think of a crusty iPad that I'm sure somebody watching this video has nieces and nephews that have that big chunky iPad. Don't sue me, Apple. So this is kind of your all-in-one dispersal of information through the game, you have the copad. It gives you your map, it gives you hints, it's a, it's a, uh, an enemy guide, etc, etc. So, we're getting a ping all the way up top here, because we need to find the drake. Okay. Great. So you can take photos if you'd like. Probably I'm not going to do that. But for now, we do have the ability to actually 
start farming some Pikmin. As you can see on that cardboard box right there, we're going to need 20 in order to find our way past it. And in the process, we're going to be hounded by sheer grubs. That's what those little nasty things are, those creepy crawlies. Any enemy that you defeat in this game will carry, if carried back by the proper color of Pikmin, will allow you to take it back to spoilers, the onion. It's not a strawberry, looks like one. And in doing so, you will be able to pop out more Pikmin. This is how you make more. So, the reproductive process of Pikmin is all about destroying your enemies and turning them into your own. So, that's it. Pretty simple. You're only able to have 100 Pikmin on the field at a time, so once you get to a certain amount where you killed a bunch of enemies, you did a good old heckin' job, and you just want to make more, it'll leave them in the onion. So you can make more, it'll keep them inside it. But for now, we're not going to be able to do that. So, I just showed a mechanic that the game actually didn't explain yet, but it will. Um, you can hit the X button to charge. And what charging does is rushes an enemy, which I think is really fun and cool. Super cool and fun, in fact. I would like to not do that. Okay, never mind. We're going to take down this pellet posy. I believe that's what those are called. As we miss the throw. Well, that's why I'm not a professional baseball player. Yet. We're going to do a little bit of locking on. And we'll carry that five pellet. This one is huge. That is what she said. So. We're going to have those guys carry it. We're going to head back to the onion itself. And reap the reward of all of our new buddies we've been creating. And we're getting very close to the 20 marker. We'll actually have more than 20, which is nice. I believe when you carry a pellet of a color and the dominant carrying force, as you can see by the top color, in this case it's red because we only have red, it should give you double the amount. So we just took a five pellet and it should pop out. Okay, so I guess not, just kidding. Uh, in certain cases, I thought that it would give you twice the amount. Maybe that's only for certain enemies, but that five pellet posy only is gonna give us five, but we've got just enough. My mechanics of this game are a little rusty. It's been a while since I played. It's been a few years, so bear with me. So we're gonna charge this box and have our Pikmin dutifully push it out of the way like a bunch of good heckin' boys. Working so hard for us. And our reward is a flash drive. Actually, that's more of an SD card. I got excited. So there's a bunch of these throughout the game. There's tutorials that they're gonna tell you about. And then there's ones that you can collect. So now that Alf has his copad, we can collect these files and learn officially with our lesson of Pikminology 1 about what the onion is, that weird strawberry fixture that we found. That's right. So we can save that in the exploration notes. Very good for us. I think it's great that Alf installs apps on the copad, so very timely. But we've got these data files and it's not coming from our captain. So it's very strange. But uh, that's actually all that we're going to do today. We'll continue finding out where we can get Charlie and the SS Drake on the next episode. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pikmin 3. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.